Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Arirang News Break on this Friday, July 15th. Live from Seoul, I'm Handan. We'll begin with the latest developments on the tragic attack in France where thousands were gathered to celebrate Bastille Day. At least 84 people are dead and scores of others injured from the attack, which the French president has called an act of terror. Let's get the details from our Hwang Ojun at the News Center. Hojun. That's right, Dallin. French President Francois Hollande flew back from Mongolia to Paris for an emergency meeting and gave a national television address. He said there's no denying, I quote, terrorist attack, uh, and swore that nothing will stop France's fight against terrorism, adding that France will reinforce its actions in Syria and Iraq. He also extended by three months the state of emergency in France that has been in place since the Paris attack last year. The attack happened as thousands of people were gathered on the main promenade in Nice, enjoying the evening until gunshots were heard and a white truck literally mowed people down while accelerating for a distance of about two kilometers. A lorry arrived and smashed into everyone, everyone. It happened there on the promenade. Afterwards, there were shots and everything. The truck finally stopped when police shot out the windscreen and killed the attacker. Local authorities found an arsenal of weapons inside the truck, including firearms, grenades and explosives. Question, any details on who the perpetrator was? Well, it's hard to say just yet. Identity documents belonging to a 31-year-old French Tunisian man from Nice were found in the truck. Authorities are investigating to see if they match the body found in the vehicle. No claim of responsibility has been made by a terrorist organization, but there are plenty of hints pointing to Islamic extremist groups such as ISIS. Apparently, ISIS has encouraged its followers to use such tactics before. Given the sheer scale of carnage and the discovery of sophisticated weaponry, experts are saying it's highly likely the attack was pre-planned or organized. Down. Thank you, Hojun, for that. Nice is a popular vacation spot for Koreans as well, and about five Koreans in Nice are now reportedly out of contact. Let's now go over to our Kwon Soa for more from Seoul's foreign ministry. Soa. Hi, Dan. Well, as you said, as of now, no casualties of Korean nationals have been reported, but the foreign ministry said this morning five Koreans in Nice could not be contacted as of 10 a.m. Korea time or 3 a.m. France time. Now, an official like Gokju said, what we should take into consideration is that this is largely based on people who could not be reached on their phones, and among them is a person that's having his or her mobile phone repaired. Well, someone was said to have had an appointment in Nice during lunchtime. Also, some of them may be using Korean USIM cards in their mobile devices. Now, to ensure the safety of Korean nationals, the foreign ministry ordered the Korean embassy in Paris to dispatch a consul to the tragedy-stricken city. In the meantime, here at the ministry in Seoul, an emergency meeting of related ministries is being held behind closed doors this afternoon. So that's all I have for, for now. Back to you, Tan. Thank you, Soa. Keep us updated throughout the day. We now go over to Mongolia, where the 11th ASEM summit has kicked off, marking 20 years of cooperation and exchanges between Asia and Europe. President Park Geun-hye gave an opening speech with remarks on the attack in Nice before elaborating on her vision for the summit's future. We get more from our Song ji Son in Ulaanbaatar. President Park Geun-hye began her speech by expressing her deepest condolences to victims and their families in Nice, stressing that terror attacks cannot be tolerated under any circumstances. As the first speaker of the session, President Park noted the challenges facing the world, like extreme violence and terrorism, North Korea's nuclear threats and climate change. She said the asia Year meeting group must take a leading role in global cooperation and underscore the need to improve the effectiveness of ASEM as a platform for economic cooperation. Against a rising trend of trade protectionism, President Bach stressed that ASEM must lead open trade to both foster the growth of developing nations and narrow the economic gap between nations. President Bach also suggested holding the ASEM economic ministers meeting in Korea next year for concrete discussions on how innovation and creativity can foster growth. The meeting was last held in 2003 and suspended after high-level talks in 2005, 
because ASEAN members were up to the Netherlands' refusal to issue a visa for Myanmar's representative over the country's human rights record. Park wrapped her speech by calling for unified efforts and goals through ASEAN's principal virtues of informality, flexibility and networking. President Mark also had bilateral talks with the leaders of Laos, Vietnam and the European Union, seeking to strengthen those partnerships while asking for the country's support for our North Korean policies. Song Ji-sun, Arirang News, Ulaanbaatar. South Korea, the U.S. and Japan have agreed to strengthen their trilateral cooperation in countering North Korea and condemning Pyongyang's continuous violations of its international obligations. Seoul's foreign ministry said Friday South Korea's vice foreign minister Im Song nam and his U.S. and Japanese counterparts Tony Blinken and Shinsuke Sukiyama met for high-level talks in Honolulu, Hawaii on Thursday local time where they affirmed the stance that North Korea's pursuit of nuclear and missile weapons poses a direct threat to the three countries and the international community. They discussed the need for more effective and creative methods to pressure the North and assessed the implementation of UN Security Council sanctions. That is Adirang News break for today. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more on the France truck attack and other stories making headlines in and outside of Korea.